In this video, we're going to start discussing trigonometric identities. So there are a lot of these guys that we need to go through uh, throughout this course. A lot of things to memorize. I suggest you use note cards, uh, make yourself some flashcards. Also, get yourself a, a clean piece of paper or two so that every time we learn a new formula or see a new identity, you write it down there. Not, I mean, put it in your notes, but also put it on a piece of paper or two that's easily accessible so you can always have that out whenever you're doing work. Okay, so in this section, we're going to connect back to something that I talked about a lot in the last section, and that's going to be reciprocal identities. So here are the reciprocal identities. So in the last videos, we were talking about how sine is related to cosecant and how it's one over cosecant, which would mean that cosecant is also the reciprocal of sine. So these guys are going to go together in terms of reciprocal identities. And then cosine is the reciprocal of secant, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. And this is, this is the same stuff that we were talking about in the last few videos. Now, one thing to be very careful about, and this just kind of goes back to really bad memories that I have when I was first learning this stuff, is you've got to be careful. So in algebra, if I write, say, x to the negative first, that means that we are doing the reciprocal, and you would have 1 over x. Like if, if I write 2 to the negative third, you would write that as 1 over 2 to the third, so that you could evaluate that and get 1 over 8. We don't really want to use the same negative 1 sign around these guys, because it can make things very, very awkward and very confusing. We don't want to have any kind of ambiguity with what we, with what we write. See, when I was younger, I came across an expression like this. And I saw that negative one, and you know, I have a very algebra, you know, centric mind. And I thought, oh, that negative one means do one over this. Yeah, uh, don't do that. That is not what that means. What we're going to be seeing later is that when you have the negative one like that, Notice how it's not really on the expression, it's on the name of the function. This actually means the uh, arc sign or the inverse sign. So inverse functions are not the same as reciprocal functions. You may remember this from uh, college algebra. When we're dealing with inverse functions, we would use this notation, f, and it looks like a power, but it's just in the superscript position next to the name of the function, and that indicates the inverse. So just watch out for that. So you're not really going to see me throw a negative one around uh, sine, cosine, or any of these guys, unless I'm talking about the inverse function. So keeping this in mind, and again, going with what we saw in the last, uh, in, in the last few videos, if I say that sine of theta is equal to 2 over 9, find cosecant of theta. Well, since these guys are reciprocals of each other, that means that this guy is just going to be 9 over 2. That's it. Just turn it upside down. It's all you have to do. So, if cotangent of theta is equal to negative 4 square roots of 3, then what does that mean for the tangent of theta? Well, again, cotangent and tangent are reciprocals of each other. So if I do the reciprocal of this, keep in mind this is over 1, the reciprocal would be negative 1 over 4 square roots of 3. I can't leave it like that because I do need to rationalize. The only issue I have with the radical is that I've got a square root of 3. So I multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. We have negative. 
in the numerator, that's the square root of 3. In the denominator, you already have a 4. And these guys will give me a 3. So we end up with 12 when this is all said and done, when it's completely simplified and rationalized. So again, you're just having to do the reciprocal for this. Uh, so then this last one, we have the secant of theta is equal to negative 5. And if that's the case, what's cosine? Well, again, since cosine is the reciprocal of secant, then this is just going to be the reciprocal of negative 5, which is negative 1 -fifth. That's, that's all there is to it. Now, we have some exciting stuff still to come with Pythagorean identities and quotient identities. So I hope you stick around. Hope you enjoy yourselves.